Okay, today we're going to take a look at some of the attribute uh, analysis resources available in Kingdom Suite. Let me pull this down a little bit. This is uh, IHS is the company. They uh, now distribute this uh, software called Kingdom Suite. And it used to be Seismic Microtechnology, but it was bought out by IHS. And uh, <clears throat> they have a lot of useful resources. I'd encourage you and your departments to uh, uh, check with IHS about the possibility of a um, uh, university uh, donation, an education grant. Uh, IHS is very, very, uh, as was uh, Seismic Microtechnology, they were very free with distributing their software to universities and they uh, enjoy having their, um, and appreciate having their, um, uh, having students trained in the software so that when they go into industry they know how to use it. So what we have here is a uh, map window display of this uh, 3D data set. And we're just going to bring up a particular line here, this cross line 90. And um, <clears throat> try to pull it up into this window. It gives you a fairly narrow view. If you're working on a, a desktop, you have a, a very large uh, workspace. So this is going to be kind of a limited uh, perspective of of what we can do. I'm just going to um, change the vertical scale here a little bit, let's say but, uh, 12 inches per second instead of 15. So we see uh, a little bit larger larger window here. Also while we're at it, I'm, I'm just going to come over here and just note very briefly the, the different uh, types of seismic display that you have access to. and. I'm going to bring up this uh, variable area wiggly trace display because this is often overlooked as a useful resource for uh, interpreting your data. So I would encourage you, it's, you know, you probably, you may have seen some old paper records that uh, uh, there were only variable area wiggly trace, but uh, it does come in handy. You can do this with Kingdom uh, in high res color raster or variable area wiggly trace. and. Uh, <clears throat> Sometimes you can see some things with the uh, variable area wiggly trace that aren't so obvious with, uh, let's say, a uh, color raster uh, raster display by itself. So uh, <clears throat> anyway, we have the amplitudes over here, positive and negative. So the positive amplitudes, the high amplitudes are in the darker colors. The negative amplitudes are in the uh, <clears throat> in the uh, uh, pinker colors and uh, what we wanted to do of course is to look at attributes and Kingdom Suite has a package of attributes referred to as rock solid attributes. These attributes were developed by M. Turhan Turner and his group so you've we've talked about his paper before you know in terms of computation of the uh, quadrature trace using the Hilbert transform. So <clears throat> You'll notice here, for example, that we have uh, geometrical attributes. Uh, curvature is very, is you know, often very used for pulling out different kinds of structural attributes. So, you could be looking in the dip direction for faults or fracture zones or valleys, um, different kinds of stratigraphic features. So, most positive, most negative uh, curvature. And um, these are, as with any attribute, you usually you're, you 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 have to have some justification for using it. So, if we were looking for faults or fracture zones or uh, valleys, then there'd be a good reason to look at uh, uh, curvature in the dip direction, the most negative, the most positive uh, curvature, and so on. There's a good text by. Um, Oh, uh, Chopra and Marford on seismic attributes for prospect identification and reservoir characterization. There's a good overall discussion of attributes um, in that text, which would be a really tremendous supplement to the very brief discussion that I'm going to be giving here. Now, on the instantaneous attributes, you can see here we've got the imaginary part, the um, <clears throat> instantaneous frequency, instantaneous phase. We've talked about all these. The real part would just be your uh, real seismic trace, the traces that we have over here. The imaginary part would be your Hilbert transform. 
So we get instantaneous attributes, we get uh, spectral decomposition attributes. We'll have to talk about uh, amplitude spectra Fourier transform before we get into this. Uh, wavelet attributes, we'll have to talk about wavelets before we come back to this particular topic. So I'm just going to cancel on that. And um, we've got an amplitude display up here. I'm going to turn on something called co-blending, which uh, pulls in a couple attributes for comparison. And let's just take a look at the uh, Hilbert transform. Now, here we have the Hilbert transform superimposed on the amplitude display. And let me just zoom in here, take a little closer look at some of this. And remember what we said about the Hilbert transform. Um, the notice that the peaks in the Hilbert transform, which are shown in color here, are about uh, 90 degrees out of phase with the um, with the amplitude data. So you can see we have the uh, peaks in the amplitude up here shown by the uh, variable area wiggles, and we have the peaks in the Hilbert transform shown here by the uh, the bluer bluer colors. So this co-blending helps us kind of see this kind of 90 degree uh, phase relationship between the Hilbert transform and the quadrature trace and the amplitude trace that we see here. See the same sort of thing down here in this uh, deeper reflector. Um, and uh, we, we see a good mapping of the Hilbert transform amplitudes here in color superimposed on the uh, uh, trace amplitudes. So. That's the benefit of the co-blending. We can kind of see both of those things together. You can also see that the variable area wiggly, wiggly traces are superimposed regardless. So let's go back to the amplitude display for a minute. Now let me just uh, come back here for a second and come over to the rock solid attribute list and um, you know select our data set and come here and let's look at the instantaneous attributes. Note that the Hilbert transform does not appear in here. The Hilbert uh, uh, trace does not appear in here, but that's going to be the imaginary part. So it may be called one thing and uh, you know one module and something else and another. Over here we had the Hilbert uh, uh, attribute listed, uh, you know, by the name Hilbert. Remember that the Hilbert trace is basically the quadrature, the imaginary trace. So. <clears throat> What I'd like to do is just uh, let me readjust this uh, time window back to, let's say, about um, <clears throat> 12 inches per, per second. And we're looking at this, you know, our zone of interest here. But what I want to do is, is come over here and take a look at um, another resource in Kingdom. We go to Tools, and then we come down here to Trace Calculations, and then Process Multiple Traces. Select our data set, <clears throat> and we can select a uh, subset. I'll just kind of go through this kind of kind of quickly, but um, selecting subsets is recommended. We can digitize off of our uh, base map, and let's just say that we were interested in looking at the uh, looking at some parameter in this particular. Area. So we only wanted to calculate it for the traces in this area, maybe only from one to two seconds. So we can we can do that, and uh, and then you can see over here that we could select the uh, Hilbert, we could select the uh, average energy, we could select um, frequency and phase, and so on. Now I'm not going to do all these calculations here. I'll just just wanted to show you that this, um, <clears throat> this resource is here, and that sometimes you'll see uh, the imaginary trace referred to as the Hilbert trace, or sometimes as the quadrature trace, and, um, and um, so on. We also, you know, we see average energy. And so there are a lot of resources available to you in the Kingdom Suite software. You have to spend a little bit of time looking, uh, looking around for them. So the next thing I want to do is let's come back to this uh, vertical display. <clears throat> we talked about the instantaneous frequency. Let's go ahead and bring that up um, somewhere in here, the frequency. OK, not a very useful display. So we'll come back here to um, try to rescale this a little bit. So 
we get down there. Now let me do the same sort of thing. We'll zoom in on this uh, kind of zone of interest. Where we have two, two reflectors that have been mapped. Uh, let me come back here and just adjust the uh, horizontal scale. Let's, let's use uh, 12 traces per inch. So we get all the data in there, but notice that the uh, higher frequencies here shown in blue are associated with this uh, high amplitude. Uh, we can see some, you know, if we look at other parts of the data, we can see some high frequency um, uh, content in, you know, less pronounced uh, amplitudes in the amplitude data. And uh, so you can you can see that we have frequencies that go from around 62 hertz to 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 54 hertz to 38 hertz, and this this in a way is really not quite that helpful. And we can also use co-blending here to superimpose these. We've got our high-res color raster uh, amplitude display on top of the frequency display, and we can we can uh, display those together, but. <clears throat> In our mind, we're kind of wondering, okay, what is the frequency distribution in our seismic data? So let me come back to the amplitudes here and just, we'll come back over here to um, tools. And the question that we're asking is, okay, we can see when we look at the frequencies that we have certain frequencies associated with certain events. But the question that we might have is, what is the frequency content overall in, in this um, uh, data set. And uh, so we're going to come back here and we're going to look at the survey spectrum. In our, you know, we went to tools. Again, we'll select our 3D data set. We'll look at uh, amplitudes. And again, we'll do this subsetting here. I'll uh, digitize this. Again, we'll kind of look at this area around the wells. And, and now I'll pick a window from one to two seconds. And then I'll apply. <clears throat> So here is our amplitude spectrum. You can see that we have amplitudes extending from about 10 hertz to 80 hertz. Uh, we haven't talked about um, spectral analysis, but you may be, you may be generally familiar with the uh, frequency, the idea of frequency content from some of our earlier discussions. We see we have frequencies between about 10 to 80 hertz. Now, if we <clears throat> come back here and look at our seismic section, you know, we might, uh, we went from one to two, sec two seconds here. Let's go from, let's say, 1.4 to, um, or let's say 1.3 1 to 1.6 seconds. So we're looking at a smaller window of data. And we'll go ahead and apply that. Now you see the spectrum got a little smoother there. But we still see frequency content between about 10 hertz and uh, 80, 80, 80 plus hertz. Let me let me come back over to this uh, window here and um, <clears throat> let me reset the vertical scale to about 20, let's say, and so we can see this this bigger window. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to subset this. I want to take a even smaller window. So I'll go from let's say 1.4 to 1. Uh, 1.5 seconds. <clears throat> okay. We'll take a look at that. And you can see that this doesn't look very reasonable. We've, we're losing a lot of the detail in the spectrum there. We've looked at a tenth of a second of data, basically from 1.4 to 1.5 seconds, I believe. Let's come back here and take a look at that. Uh, the window was just too small, though, 1.4 to 1.5 seconds. So, uh, and this happens often. So you have to be careful about the size of the window that you um, take. Now, if we wanted to kind of bracket the zone of interest here, we might go from, let's say, 1.3 to 1.5 seconds and uh, go through a recalculation there. And you can see that we, we do have some edge effects here. We do have a small window. Uh, problem. We are seeing data between uh, frequencies between 10 and uh, 90 hertz in this particular case. Uh, we do have a lot of higher frequency content in here as we showed in our um, <clears throat> uh, frequency, frequency display. Uh, we don't really see frequencies in the 80 to 90 hertz range uh, up here in our, uh, in our color bar. But 
that just kind of brings us uh, from one domain, the time domain that we're looking at here, to the frequency domain. Uh, the instantaneous frequency attribute gives you some good, uh, gives you a good breakdown. Uh, but <clears throat> it 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 is limited in the sense that it's it's kind of looking locally. Uh, the instantaneous attribute, as we noted with the Hilbert transform, it's not really instantaneous, but it is, is fairly local. So the last thing that I want to illustrate before uh, moving along uh, uh, would be to come back here to um, just remind you of the rock-solid attributes, and then come over here to the Help window, go to the Help Center, and then we'll take a look at the seismic attributes. So uh, we've got um, our rock solid attributes in here. Uh, we could be looking at instantaneous attributes. And if you want to come back and review some of the, the, the definitions, the imaginary part, remember, is computed using the Hilbert transform or the real part. Um, the instantaneous frequency, again, is the derivative of the phase. Um, <clears throat> the instantaneous phase, remember, is just 180 over pi with the inverse tangent of the imaginary part over the real part. So you should be familiar with this by now in our, um, in our discussions. And um, the last thing I think I'd take a look at here would be um, the geological uses. And this is something to think about. We, you know, we just kind of briefly skirted on this issue here. Um, if we're looking at the instantaneous attributes, what might you use the... Um, um, second derivative, the dominant frequency, the imaginary part, uh, the instantaneous wave number. How would those be, re, might those be related to specific geological features? They could be related to depositional environment, bedding indicators, fault detection, and um, so on. I think we, you know, we'd have to go back to the geometrical attributes and in order to get something in the uh, <clears throat> fault detection category, this would be dip of maximum similarity, dip variance, instantaneous lateral continuity, similarity, so on and so forth. Um, uh, these are, uh, this is a, a really good resource and uh, the Kingdom Suite software is uh, an excellent uh, software to look at and I just wanted to give you kind of an introduction to this. Uh, the next time we're going to take, uh, we'll take a look at mapping attributes on um, on surfaces. And here I've just kind of quickly mapped the amplitude attribute on this uh, D horizon that uh, we've been showing in our interpretation window. So we'll uh, talk about this uh, next time and uh, thanks for joining us.